It's been a pretty mild winter, but as you can tell from the image behind me, that has shifted a little bit. Still pretty mellow. It's just a touch below freezing, but a whole bunch of snow, really dense, uh, moist, packed snow. And I want to take a look in the chicken yard and in particular this structure, which is our winter run. Do a little bit of a review about that and talk about the benefits of thinking about having a season extension or covered space for hens in the winter months in a cold climate, so stick around. Just finished up uh, dealing with getting some access through the driveway. We still use a shovel, so if I sound a little winded, that is why. The firewood shed doing nice work for itself, holding up to these sorts of snows. Nothing too crazy here, but, but wet. It's pretty dense and pretty wet. But anyway, I digress. Let's head into the chicken yard. I've got my broom with me so I can take a look at our carport structure. Pardon my camera work. Um, and be able to clean off some of the snow on the top. It does a decent job of shedding the snow for itself. This isn't so crazy of a snow. It's not a two-footer, uh, and I don't see it being sunk in in there. The contrast is pretty amazing. So here are some sea berries right outside the structure. There's some willows behind them. These are the sea berries, and those are the willows. And covered in snow, it's a very wintry landscape. And just a few feet over in this structure that truly cost under $10 to build. I'll remind folks of that, uh, why that is in a moment. But here is the space where most of the hens are today, enjoying, it's markedly warmer. I don't have a temperature, um, a thermometer out here with me right now, but I would guess it's like 10 to 20, maybe 30 degrees warmer in the space air temperature. And the soil is completely thawed, if not warm. It's a lovely scene. Down on this end, you can see the hens are really actively working. This is the finishing end of the winter run. So I've got an east side, I've got a west side over here, and a walkway through the middle. And this side, as the material is brought in, piled up, dumped, just slowly, gently tumbling, ever so gently down slope, and the hens get to work on it at every stage. So I just used the hay fork a moment ago, dug down, in the pile and built up. So I'm always creating as much three-dimensionality, basically waves in in direct opposition to absolutely flat compost where they would interact with it the least. So here is this nice tsunami wave of compost. They'll go through as demonstrated right there and kick through looking for all the worms and the sprouts and for uh, below freezing snowy landscape outside the fact that there are sprouts in here at all is pretty phenomenal. The worm population has been increasing pretty nicely throughout the winter. And it's all due to this space. I got this carport from our neighbor a few years ago. It was standing with tattered walls. And I just asked, I said, hey, are you still using that? He's like, no, you can just take it if you want it. So I cleaned up the area, rebuilt it. I had to spend a few dollars on some bolts and nuts that were missing here or there found the instructions to assemble online, and it's been reinforced with scrap lumber and 14 gauge wire. So there's definitely some additional bits in here. The greenhouse poly is all reclaimed from greenhouses that were being taken apart anyway, so that was free. So the structure itself was free. The lumber is nearly free. It's all from scrap wood from a local mill. Uh, it's really just a few bolts and some 14 gauge wire that make this structure, and the value is astronomical in here. You can see Rooster Friend, he's a little scared of the snow. He'll make his way out eventually, but you can see the commute from the coop is not a very long one. There's some real value in that. They leave. I just have to shovel this strip right in here, and then they're in to their winter run, which might as well be a spring or summer run as far as the temperature and what's happening in that space. So proximity of the main coop, this is buttoned up a bit. <laughs> in our style scrap greenhouse poly stapled on a bunch of raw wool and waste cotton so we have a friend who runs an upholstery business and the little cloudy puffs are her waste cotton and then the tufts of hair which might also show up in some of our packages when we ship is waste wool from friends that have sheep uh, that keeps them less, less drafty and a little bit insulated but they can leave there do this little commute and be into chicken paradise it's a pleasurable space for them, for sure. These ladies are picking apart some leaf fat. We have a friend who hunts, and so he'll set aside the fat from the deer. So that's an intensely high energy 
uh, source for them. That's that piece that that lady's working on. Some old kefir that Sasha was making from milk. Uh, that's dumped in there. Some soaked seed. I mean, it looks gnarly, but the chickens really enjoy it. You can see where food scraps have been brought in. If they're outside, they tend to freeze or preserve. It's basically like a refrigerator, putting them on ice. And then we can migrate that material into the winter run and then start piling it up on either side. And that flow pattern has been really nice for us. Incredible side benefit here. I've talked about this before. These ladies that are sitting still, I would suspect underneath them the compost is radiating probably 60 or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If I dig in there, steam would pour out. I don't want to do that because they're relaxing. So it's basically like a standing heat pad for the older ladies. Anywhere that they're standing still here, it's radiating heat. I'll bring my thermal camera out for another video, but I don't even need to do that in order to know. I can tell by the, the quality of the hens, where they're standing and what they're up to. Lots of heat in the compost there. A nice little bit here and some mellow heat over here. So it's really sweet. They get to work on it to get their food, but stand still on it to just get radiative warmth and comfort. The colder it gets, the more it's still stable in here temperature-wise. So if it's 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside, it might still be 60 or 70 Fahrenheit right at ground level here, and the hens absolutely adore it. They've got enough to work on in here for now, so we're gonna lay low on bringing more material. But what we can do is, as we wanna feed more new stuff to them, as time allows and weather allows, I can bring the sled out now that there's snow and there's a cache of compost in here. We've added some, we'll call it high, high nitrogen fertilizer fluid here to keep this pile really active and warm. It looks like a weird smiley face. <laughs> These melted spots here are from the compost itself, radiating out warmth enough to melt the snow. So that's a really good sign that we can move that into the winter run and I know that in here there's probably a hundred thousand to a million red wigglers. I don't think I'm exaggerating much, but we're going to leave them under the snow. If anything, we'll put a little more snow on top and let that be an insulated bank account, a savings account for worms for later. That's it for now for me for today. We'll let the hens have some privacy and some fun. Um, share in the comments, what sort of questions do you have? Are you doing systems like this? What sort of uh, resources are you looking for out there in order to have season extension in your cold climate? Let's keep chatting about keeping really beautiful habitat and space and functional work areas for our hens in the winter months in cold climates. Thanks for watching.